by Mickey Scott Bay Jones in her Invitation to Brave Space. Together we will create brave space because there is no such thing as safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and we have all caused wounds. In this space, we seek to turn down the volume of the outside world and we amplify the voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and continue to grow. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. This space will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it to be, but it will be our brave space together. And we will work on it side by side. I start nearly every day with a to-do list. Between you and me, it's usually an overly ambitious to-do list, scribbled on a post-it note in the corner of my desk. One of the things that often remains unchecked at the end of the day is making time for writing. It's not that writing isn't important to me. I'm so dedicated to being a writer that every day I put it on the list, and every day I collect quotes and prompts and ideas so that when I do write, I'll have lots of inspiration for it. 
I'm so dedicated that every day I finish other important tasks and other pressing commitments so that eventually I'll have lots of time to write. I'm so dedicated that surely one of these days I will start some writing. One of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott, talks about this, about how hard it is, in fact, to just sit down every day and put your butt in the chair and write. She says, the discouraging voices will hound you. This, this is all piffle, they will say, and they might be right. What you are doing may just be practice, but this is how you're going to get better. Some of the best writing advice I ever got was from a teacher who told me, for now, take a few minutes and don't write, but just write what you would write if you were going to write. I feel like in all the years since I've gotten that advice, I haven't written anything since then, but I have written a lot about what I would write if I did. You might call this the practice of practicing, learning how to practice. The problem is that the finished product we might imagine for ourselves can feel so far from where we're starting, our ugly first drafts. The person we would like ourselves to be can sometimes feel so far from the person we see in the mirror every morning. The world as we would like it to be can feel impossibly far from what we read in the headlines every day. The demons of perfectionism stand in the way of writing just as they stand in the way of creative risk-taking in general, which is unfortunate because we know that creating a life for yourself that doesn't yet exist requires some creative risk-taking. And being your best self in uncertain and anxious times requires setting aside those discouraging voices that hound us. And some days just imagining a world of true justice and equity and compassion, just imagining that world means setting aside the voices that say your efforts are just piffle. When the demons of perfectionism show up like this, I try to practice the practicing of showing up for myself and for others. Musicians know something about practicing. One of the requirements for all students at the, the Berklee College of Music where I attended years ago is four semesters of ear training. Now ear training is learning to sight sing music by just reading the notes on a page or learning to transcribe and write down the notes just by listening to a song. And when I began school, I knew that there certainly were people who were capable of this kind of magic, but it seemed like some kind of Harry Potter nonsense to me. Like, you may as well ask me to sit at my desk and turn the desk into a toad using my conductor's baton. It seemed totally impossible. On the first day of your training class, I remember there was a sort of nervous silence among us students. Well, silence actually, except for one student who was quite loud in his nervousness. There was one student who interrupted the teacher in the very first few minutes of the very first day to share that he was worried the class was going to be too advanced for him. He wanted to make it clear that he knew not a single thing about ear training. The teacher kindly paused his introductions to respond. He said we'd all taken entrance exams and he was sure we'd been placed in the appropriate class. The teacher tried to continue, but was interrupted again. Well, the man said, but is this the very lowest class, though? Because I need to be in the very lowest class. Now, our poor teacher, you could see, looked around the room kind of sheepishly, not really wanting to answer that, yes, we were, in fact, a class of the most basic students. He said, well, it is ear training 101, so it is the lowest. Uh, there is, I guess, a class for people that have previously failed the 101, but you all are just about the lowest. Now, some of the other students in the class giggled a little bit at this man's anxieties. I was actually kind of glad to hear that someone was questioning what felt to me like the absurd notion that sight singing even could be taught. I don't know what happened next for that student, but he never came back to our class. Not because anything we did on that first day was in fact too hard for him, I'm sure of it, 
but I think he lacked a belief that improvement was even possible. I kept going, thinking that if generations of students have done this before, it must be possible somehow, even if I personally can't see the way forward. And I made a commitment to at least practice the material. I've always remembered that other student, though, who gave up before he started. It's not just that he didn't try to become a master at ear training. It's that he didn't even try the practicing of it, which always struck me as the real loss. When the discouraging voices hound me, I sometimes think of him and I remind myself that maybe for now, the work I'm doing is just practice. But practice is how I'm going to get better. This pandemic arrived nearly a year ago and has been a difficult, and it's been a difficult year to be sure. A time of constant adaptation, of the ground beneath us shifting constantly. I imagine that the next year, much like this past year, will be a time of learning and relearning new ways of being together, of organizing our days differently all over again, and organizing our people differently all over again. This is a time of adaptation and it is a time of imagination also. This is a time of calling on those in power, which in some ways is all of us, to play a different role and to learn a new tune. Particularly in this time of reimagining our society, this time of things changing quickly, I think we're in a place calling for white people in particular to learn some new skills and learn to play some new roles in our community. It's a time for listening in deeper ways we haven't always done so well and having some hard conversations we haven't yet practiced enough. I know I won't all of a sudden adapt to these changes smoothly and with grace, but I will practice the work. Musicians know as well as anyone that muscle memory is very real. That consistent practicing changes the very structure of our brains, rewiring our circuitry, forging new connections and new possibilities. No one is born a musician. Musicians are just the ones that learned how to practice. Even songbirds need elder birds to sing to them and teach them their tunes. Practice doesn't make music perfect, but it makes music possible. And so let us practice the practicing, showing up for ourselves and others to build that new world of justice and equity and compassion. Practice won't make the world perfect, but it makes a better world possible. Someday, someday, I want to be a true expert in justice and compassion. Someday I want to be well practiced at creating that brave space, even when there's no such thing as safe space. Someday I want to be masterful at amplifying the voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. And I want to be skillful at speaking more truth and more love. Someday I want to be part of transforming our so-called justice system that has hurt so many so deeply. I want to be part of shifting our education system that fast tracks some to prison while others to college, and our energy sector that's been working overtime to overheat our planet. These are daunting tasks, to be sure. On most days, learning to transcribe a symphony seems more manageable. But that's okay, because for now, I don't have to do all of those things. I just need to practice doing what I would do if I were doing them. So dear ones, don't promise to be your best self today. Just be the person you would be if you were practicing being your best self. Don't try to rebuild a new world in the image of love this week. Just practice doing what you would do if you had committed to such things. You have the right to start somewhere and continue to grow. We all have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. And so let us start together, let us grow together, and let us practice together. May it be so, may we make it so. Our next hymn is More Waters Rising by Sarah Lynch Thomason, 
a songwriter, a singer, and a climate justice activist in Appalachia. This song, like I think the best music and perhaps like the best faith communities, calls us not to ignore the crises of our time or turn away from difficult things, but to name them honestly and face them together and move forward to face them and address them together, even when it's scary. I invite you to sing along at home as we get into it. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know. There are more fires burning, they will find their way to me. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. There are more mountains falling, they will find their way to me. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. I know, I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will wade through the waters when they find their way to me. I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will walk through the fire, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know. I will walk through the fires when they find their way to me. I will walk through the fires, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains, this I know, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains when they find their way to me. I will rebuild the mountains, this I know, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. One of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community partners. Our offering for the time being goes to Greensboro Mutual Aid, which provides direct cash assistance to people who request it. We believe that ordinary people can make a difference 
that almost everyone has a hard time sometimes and the lack of an appropriate federal response to this pandemic has rendered even more people even more vulnerable. Though we are gladdened by the stimulus bill, we still do our part to fill the gap. If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the church um, for our offering to be split, you can do so at the link in our chat and indicate COVID in the memo line. You can also mail a check. The offering will now be gratefully received. Oye mi gente, traemos la fuerza, la libertad es la única bandera. Oye mi gente, traemos la fuerza. Listen, my people. We bring the power. La libertad es la única bandera. Liberty is the only flag. Oye mi gente, traemos la fuerza. La libertad es la única bandera. Listen, my people, my condor.